Otech Communication Company is proud to present Ottaville Big Green Basketball. Tonight's game features the Ottaville Big Green and the visiting Pandora Gilboa Rockets. Otech Communication Company would like to thank Superintendent Scott Mangus and the Ottaville School Board for their cooperation and assistance in bringing you these broadcasts. Thank you to the following sponsors for your support for the Ottaville Girls and Boys Basketball broadcast for the 2020-2021 season. The sponsors are a and Tire and Auto Parts and Express Mart. Altenberger Insurance Agency, Canal Side Burgers and Brew, Creative Edge Cabinets and Woodworking, Family Chiropractic Center of Ottaville, Fort Jennings State Bank in Ottaville, Geisey Transmission, Hometown Design, J&M Excavating, Lock 16 Catering and Steakhouse, Miller Contacting Group, Miller Precision Industries, Millie's Cafe, Needeck and Hilvers Insurance Agency, Odenweller Milling Company, Otech Communication Company, Ottaville Bank Company, Ottaville Hardware, Furniture and Appliance, Ottaville Lumber Company, Ottaville Mutual Telephone Company, Precision Ag Drainage, Dr. Thomas Siefker, Subway of Ottaville, JL Wanamaker Sales and Service, Ray Wanamaker Construction. Thank you so much for your sponsorship for the 2020-2021 basketball season. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to L.W. Heckman Gymnasium for night's matchup. PCL style from the Ottaville Big Green and the Pandora Gilboa Rockets. Pandora comes into the game with a 4-5 and five record and 1-2 one and two overall in the league, while the Big Green come in at an 8-2 record and 1-0 and oh in the PCL looking to build from that. Alongside Matt Wanamaker, we got Kurt Walker and Adam Kester here to bring you the live action. Adam, should be an interesting league matchup tonight for the Big Green. Yeah, it's uh, always good to get the Putnam County League going here, and uh, you never know what you're going to get when two rivals face each other. Uh, you know, the old saying is nobody knows anybody better than your own league opponent. So uh, we'll see what uh, Pandora brings to the table here tonight. Say uh, first round of state rankings came out this week, which don't mean a whole lot this early in the season. However, uh, Pandora is a very young and experienced team, only starting one senior. But they did have uh, one big win against Lipsick, who was ranked number 12th in the state in the first poll. So look for them to grow. Uh, Big Green, obviously, 10 seniors, very experienced. And Will Miller, been playing for three years. It's like another senior out there. So we shall see. Uh, right now we are going to pay some bills. A&D Tire and Auto Parts and Express Mart. The Express Mart on U.S. Route 224 in Ottaville is open Monday through Thursday from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. Friday, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Featuring quality Valero fuel at competitive prices. The drive through carryout has all the things you need to know when you're in a hurry, whether it be pop, candy, gum, or milk, and bread products. Having a party? The Express Mart has all your party supplies and refreshments. Looking forward to serving you, our customer, at the Express Mart in Audeville. And don't forget your lottery tickets. Altenberger Insurance Agency. Teamwork is very important in sports. To be a success on the basketball court, soccer field, or any other playing area that requires teamwork. The same is true in many other areas in life, including the selection of your insurance coverage. Altenberger Insurance Agency, representing Hastings Mutual Insurance Company, will work with you on your team so you can be successful in choosing the winning combination for security and protection. Altenberger Insurance Agency, Ottaville and Hastings Mutual are team players. Call Brian or Randy at 419-453-3424. Contact an insurance agency that cares about you. And outside Burgers and Brew would like to wish the Ottaville Big Green and Lady Green the best of luck during their season. Stop in Wednesday through Sunday and try one of our custom ground steak burgers, hand-cut canal side fries, or freshly made salads. Now offering delicious specials on Fridays and Saturdays, stop by Canal Side Burgers and Brew for great burgers before or after the game. Creative Edge Cabinets and Woodworking would like to wish the best of luck to the Big Green girls and boys basketball teams this season. Stop in and visit Craig and the gang for your new home or remodeling needs. Creative Edge offers custom cabinets, countertops, furniture, trim, and much more. Check out our showroom equipped with garage gear, bathroom vanities, custom cabinets, well-worn cabinetry, and updated hardware. Creative Edge Cabinets and Woodworking, downtown Ottaville, custom wood designs as unique as you. Dr. Brian Saxton, D.C., is a proud sponsor of Ottaville Big Green Basketball. The Family Chiropractic Center is located at 271 Northwest Canal Street in downtown Ottaville. If you're in need of chiropractic services, whether for an injury, an achy back, a headache, or an overall adjustment, contact the Family Chiropractic Center at 419-453-2279 for an appointment. Dr. Saxon would like to wish the Ottaville girls and boys a winning and healthy basketball season, and good luck to all the area teams. Fort Jennings State Bank in Ottaville would like to take this opportunity to tell the athletes of Ottaville School how proud we are of them and to wish them the very best of luck for a profitable season. 
We would be very happy to assist you in any of your banking needs. That's the Fort Jennings State Bank in Ottaville. Geise Transmission, located at 640 East Main Street in Ottaville, is a full-service facility for oil changes, brakes, tune-ups, and complete driveline repair. Now selling and repairing tires. Come see us for all your major and minor repairs. ASE certified, Better Business Bureau, A-plus rating. Call us at 419-453-3620. Hometown Design is your one-stop shop for banners, tees, and a whole lot more. Stop in at 115 East 4th Street to see what kind of products they can design for you or call 419-453-2040. Hometown Design is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. till noon and 2 p.m. till 6. They are also open Saturday mornings from 9 to noon. All righty. Three and a half minutes left here. We'll be getting underway. Um, Big Green, JV action tonight. Went to the Big Green, 42 to 37. Some very clutch last couple minute free throws by the Big Green to help to extend the lead, which was a one point game with about a minute and a half left. It was good to see them squeak out with a victory. Uh, next action will be next Saturday or next Friday at Miller City. Meanwhile, uh, next action for Pandora will be at Van Buren next Friday as well. As we alluded to a little bit earlier, Pandora, um, young, inexperienced. They have a couple, three freshmen that will actually get to see a little bit of action tonight, which is unusual to see at the varsity level. But when you don't have that many seniors, they're going to be making sure to get some young kids in there. Yeah, definitely, Matt. I think you uh, made a good point before with their lone law. Well, one of their big wins of the year against Lipsick. Lipsick's lone loss, who is a pretty solid ball club. But I, I think you can see with a young team, uh, sometimes the ups and downs. You know, they've shown the ability to be very capable to potentially pull off an upset, but they've also shown a lot of rookie mistakes in some of their other games. So I think that's some of the frustrations that Coach Lee is going to have you know, when you're working with that young of a team is some inconsistencies throughout the course of the year. And as we kind of look through and go through their roster here, 6'3 is their tallest man for the big green tonight. I think height is going to be a huge advantage for us. We got Seaver back now playing his third game. Um, had a pretty solid game against Jefferson, which the big green kind of blew it open here in the second half. A lot of height for the big green. Some keys to victory, I think, would be experience for the big green. They've been doing this stuff for a long time, like we said earlier. Any thoughts as to what you concede for tonight? Evan? Yeah, I had a couple things down for keys to tonight's game. You hit the nail on the head on the one. we got to establish the paint, whether it's on the drive, whether it's on the post-ups. I think we've got a serious advantage in the paint. Let's establish that early, uh, and that potentially could open up the outside. Second thing, as sometimes these games can go, we got to limit our sloppiness. You know, we don't want to give them any extra chances. We don't want to do anything that's going to hurt ourselves. We need to take care of the basketball, uh, no sloppiness, and then also apply the pressure. We need to see what these guys are made of. A lot of those young guys are their guards. Uh, they handle the ball quite a little bit. And I think our experience with Will and Kyle out there putting some pressure on them can really be a difference maker and get us out to a great start. Very well said there. Big Green are averaging 61 points a game, meanwhile giving up 43. So big, rather large uh, margin of victory when they do pull them out. Josh is leading the way with 22.2 points a game. Uh, Will with 13.6 and Seaver with 11. So looking to get underway here very shortly. Turnovers for the Big Green, they're only averaging about 10 a game. So like you said earlier, taking care of the ball is a huge uh, issue, I guess, for them sometimes. You know, a couple of crazy mistakes that they made against Lincoln View that ended up being a little bit costly. You know, and earlier today, if you're working a second game, you got a double header you're doing today. So OTEC thanks you for doing that. But you know what, Minster girls, they gave it to us pretty good and they forced a lot of turnovers some were unforced i was able to watch some of it on tv while you guys you and mark were doing the game that was very difficult to see just especially from some good seniors yeah i'm disappointed you're gonna watch the whole game i figured you'd be tuned in all the way but uh no that was a really nice ball club this afternoon and you know hopefully we can turn the tide here in the boys game and uh come out on the top all right we're gonna take it down to tony langhouse and the playing of our national anthem. <laughs>
Great job, Adam. The athletes, coaches, and officials present here this evening are guests of Ottaville High School. All fans are asked to respect the effort that each of them have put forth preparing for tonight's contest. We ask all those attending to show courtesy and respect for fellow fans, officials, coaches, and of course, your team and their opponent. And as important today as ever, please remember to respect the game. The officials assigned to tonight's contest are Mr. Ron Black, Mr. Brad Ellibrock, and Mr. Tony Cotter. And now for the starting lineups, first for your Pandora Gobo Rockets. At guard, a five foot 10 inch junior, number two, Will Huffman. At the other guard, a five foot eight inch freshman, number three, Aiden Harris. At forward, a five foot 11 inch junior, number 10, Dylan Crone. At the other forward, a six foot one inch senior, number 21, Blake Steiner. And at center, a six-foot sophomore, number 32, Ethan Lugabill. The Rockets are coached by Mr. Mike Lee. And now for your Ottaville Big Green. At guard, a five-foot, 11-inch junior, number two, Will Miller. At the other guard, a six-foot, two-inch senior, number four, Kyle Manns. At center, a six foot seven inch senior, number five, Ryan Seaver. At forward, a six foot three inch senior, number 10, Grant Kordekrex. And at the other forward, number six foot five inch senior, number 14, Josh Turban. Big greener coached by Mr. Keith Utendorf. All righty. Excellent job there by Mr. Lozier on the old guitar. Yeah, mixing it up here a little bit, boys. Get our rock and roll on a little bit tonight. That was nice. Yep, the crowd kind of enjoyed that. I remember a couple years ago when his older brother Kyle Lozier did that, and that was very, very good. Yeah, let's hope it uh, gets the big green boys a little pumped up here, Matt, for a fast start tonight. What do you think? Uh, let's hope so. We're getting underway here. I would think here Mr. Seaver should win the jump ball. Boy, that's a good bet, my friend. There you go, and he got it. Out to Josh. Pandora starting off in a little man. Nice take to the bucket by Will. Seaver up and in. There's that size advantage we were talking about a little bit already earlier, Matt. Uh, Seaver should have a heyday on those offensive boards. There's no question. Huffman looks to bring it up against the pressure from Will. Bigger and going big again uh, with Seaver back. They kept him out. Uh, and kept Grant uh, quarter cracks in the starting lineup. Dylan Crone setting up the offense. You can tell Pandora with not much size. They're kind of playing a little bit of a, a Princeton-style offense with all five players above the free throw line at most times here, Matt. You know, and Coach Lee for Pandora, back when we played 20-plus years ago, he was the lovely coach over at Minster. He's been around the block a time or two. Yes, he is. He's uh, one of the winningest coaches over there, if not the winningest in Minster history. Uh, he's a competitive guy, knows his X's and O's. I think Pandora uh, is lucky to have him. Yes. We getting a little uh, whole gate flavor here, Matt? A little delay <laughs> game already, or what are we doing here? Uh, you know, and like we said, you know, he knows what he's doing. He does not want to get into an up and down game with us. He knows that is not going to go good. So I think he's thinking maybe two to two at the end of the I, first quarter. I, I tell you what, I don't blame him. Um, you know, he knows his team, and I think he realizes they might not have the firepower to hang with us. So he's going to maybe try to shorten the game here a little bit. Well, if that's the case, we should be home here pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Eight minutes goes pretty fast, and the clock doesn't stop. Well, we're, we're two minutes in, but they better realize they're down two. They can't hold it the whole way. I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to go to the basket and go for layups only. Rebound by Turbin. Will back out. Josh skips over to Seaver. Big Green being pretty patient, too. Nice pass by Will. Josh with two. Woo! Looked like Turbin had a step there, boys. <laughs> I thought he might go up for a dunk. That looked like he was way up there on that, re or that layup. Good hustle there by Will to knock it away. Possession will stay with Pandora. You know, stall ball is going to be 
um, a pretty moot point here. If they get up six or eight real fast, they're going to have the opportunity to slow her down. Yeah, I don't mind the strategy. I, I think, you know, like I said, coach knows his team, but you're right. It's, it's very ineffective if you're down a handful of possessions. And right. the other thing is, is with those young ball handlers, you know, can they maintain possession for as long as he's wanting to do without turning it over too much? And, you know, looking at Aiden Harris, says he's 5'11". Uh, I guess Will's stat book says he's 5'11", too. So I guess they're about the same height. But I think we'd be putting a lot of pressure on those guys. Will with the deflection. Layup up and in. Going to get a timeout by Pandora. It's like a quick 30 by Coach Lee there. j &M Excavating is proud to be a sponsor of our local sports community. They have been servicing the area for 20 years now, specializing in site work, water lines, sewer lines, concrete, trucking, and emergency repairs. Give us a call at 419-453-2143 for all of your residential, commercial, and municipal excavating needs. Mike and the crew at j &M Excavating would like to wish all of the athletes the best of luck this season. All right, 6 nothing. a little less than three minutes underway here. <clears throat> Big Green, pretty excited about that, putting some pressure on. You know, and if they do want to kind of pull it out, I think the Big Green are not going to sit back and just let them do it. They're going to pressure, and with having the height of Grant and Ryan, they're just going to trap the heck out of you. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think you saw that on the previous possession. If they're going to try to make, you know, 10, 12, 15 passes, we're just going to go ahead and run and jump and see if they can handle the pressure. Seem to be out a little bit different offense right now. Yeah, more of their traditional offense here. Being very methodical, moving the ball around, trying to post Will up. Nice take to the bucket. Up and in. Luganville for two. Gets Pandora on the board, 6-2 here, 4.44 left in the first quarter. Interesting matchup here. They got a smaller crone on Seaver at 5'11". Yeah, you'd think Josh really understands the matchups. Eventually he'd be coming down there. Yeah, I think we can get it in the paint anytime we want. We just got to handle that little bit of outside pressure and we're going to be able to get about anything we want down low. Deflection there by Lugan Bill. Possession will stay. Eli Huffman, 5'11 junior, comes in. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing, Matt. They're, they're not bringing much size in off the no. bench either. You know, I think their biggest player is injured for a little while, uh, a 6'3 junior, uh, and he's their biggest player on the roster. Off balance shot there by Turbin goes in, gives him two more. Oh, they're going to get Will with the block. Very aggressive. You know, that's Will's nature. Nothing wrong with that. That's yeah, good hustle play. Almost had the turnover. I think we're going to go right back to it, really. Looking to inbound. Aiden Harris, freshman. Oh, Kyle almost got that. And that's one thing that they're going to have to fight against from doing is they're slowing it down. They're used to playing more of an up-tempo game is not reaching and trying to create something they don't have to. Right. I, I think the one thing, you know, we mentioned in the pregame, let's avoid the sloppiness. Let's, let's not, you know, that's including some silly fouls. You know what I mean? we got to know when we can get that steal, when we can't, because the other thing is the last thing we want to do is put some of our own players on the bench because of foul trouble. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jack Langhouse and Trey Schlockbaum entered the game for Ottaville. Trey had himself a good game. He was the hometown design player of the game, coming off the bench, making, a, I think, a two to three three-pointers. <clears throat> that was good to see the last game out of Trey. Yes. Uh, hopefully he can build off of that. He needs to get a little momentum going here. He's always been a good defender and a good shooter, just hasn't had the chance to get some good shots up. Another good solid defensive possession here by the green, uh, really forcing Pandora to play pretty far outside. Really not much penetration or, or passing even into the lane yet. Big Green are switching everything. They say enough of this. Nice pass down low. They're going to get Trey with a foul. Going to the free through line, Ethan Luganville. It's the only thing, Matt, when you go and you know, you're playing that aggressive trapping defense, if they do get it out of the trap, you're giving a limited offensive team you know, some potential two-on-ones on the backside and, and see what's going on right. So, you know, you kind of got to pick your poison a little bit of how much are you going to sit back and just play great defense and then how much are you going to try to maybe give up a layup or two to create, you know, four or five turnovers. 
Well, I know, and, you know, like we said earlier, we were averaging 61 points a game. And I get it, we want to get up and down a run, but if they want to sit back there and hold the ball out there and stall it for a little bit, you know, let them stall. <laughs> I wouldn't be coming out and being all over them. I, I agree with you because I'm not sure they can handle it that no. long. You know what I mean? They just haven't shown the signs of having that great of ball handlers. Nice rebound by Turbin. They got a little bit of extracurricular activities going on there. Trey Schlockbaum mixing it up for the big green. I, I tell you, <laughs> if you folks at home maybe weren't paying attention and heard there was maybe just a little mixing up going on down there, you might have bet that number three was involved. He seems to have his nose in the middle of that stuff sometimes. Uh, a little frustrated there. Turn it over, but nothing hurt. <clears throat> Approaching the three-minute mark. Over and back. Good call. Yep. He never established possession. Yep, Coach Lee does not agree, but that's the way it goes. He's not supposed to agree right now, but he's been around ball enough. He knows it was the right call. I yeah. think he's just trying to uh, work the officials a little bit here early in the ball game. He's, he's a veteran guy over there. He knows what he's doing. They're going to get a hold on number five, Eli Huffman. That's their team's first. Trey looking inbound. Give Pandora a little bit of credit, man. They're playing pretty hard on this defensive end. I know they're not very big, you know, size-wise, but they sure are uh, being pretty feisty here on the D right now. I say you don't have to be that big or that great at, on the offensive end if your defense can be right there. Yep. And now we can kind of see why they were able to stick around with Lipsick for as long as they did. Yeah, no question about that. You know, playing good, solid D. Can really limit the scoring. They're going to get a big call. Well, they're going to get well with the charge. Boy, a little confusion there between the officials. A couple of veteran guys. We've got Brad Allebrock over there and Ronnie Black down here. Uh, I don't think either one of them wanted to make the call. Yeah, they, that's going to get well his second. And it's going to take that basket off the board, I believe, too, right, man? Yep. Still 8-2. to two. Scoreboard is not wrong. Kyle Manns now has the responsibilities of being the pesky defender. I think he likes that role. Oh, yeah. Long, lanky. They're going to get Trey with a push, which, yeah. Take, Matt, it wasn't that long ago. Last Saturday night, the fouls started adding up on us. And once again, we got two minutes to go in the first quarter. We got five team fouls already. And it was last, I believe it was Will and Trey and Kyle last game, and right now Will, Trey, and Kyle have <laughs> the five team fouls. You sensing a trend? But yes. And Trey's got his hands behind his back now. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm not getting another one. <laughs> he's got two fouls, and he's holding on to his shorts. The coach is going to gamble a little bit with him, keep him in. Grant Quarter cracks at the scorer's table. I bet he's going in for him. Yeah. Might be trying to buy, get through this quarter where they can get his younger brother, Kellen, potentially some time again like he did last week. He's looked pretty solid the last two games he has played. Big Green doing a good job. Looks like they might have missed a little travel right there. Oh, nice little hesitation. They might get a carry. Yeah. Yep. That's a good call. Good call. Eli Huffman, the 5'10 junior, made a nice little move there, but unfortunately uh, was palming the basketball. He didn't agree with it, but that's all right. Jack inbound it. Pandora picks up full court. I think just a little token pressure just to kind of slow him down a little bit on the offensive end. Moves it over to Langhouse. They're going to get a travel on Jack. That one brings Coach Utendorf right up off the bench pretty quick, folks. I think he was wanting a foul there. They've been calling it pretty tight on this end. I think he's wanting uh, the same call down there. Yeah. Oh, almost turnover there. Good pressure there by Josh. They got four guys up there. Get green, get back. Matchup, one minute left. Eight to two here. An exciting first quarter of action. Tell you what, say Pandora, uh, if you had to 
you know, now it's eight to two, but I feel like they are kind of in control of the ball game right now. They're saying, hey, we're down six after one. Or yeah. Right, or right there. We're right. Two, two buckets away from being there. Kind of playing it on their terms, their pace right now. Oh. Jump shot. Deep. Number 40. Bryce Basinger goes flying in. They're going to get him with a foul over the back. His first, team second. Yep. Good job on the box out there by Jack, causing that uh, over and back foul. Aiden Harris back in. Jack him on the ball as they double Turbin. Ooh, difficult pass. Kyle handles it. Kyle slides into the lane, safe. They're going to get foul on number five. And Eli Huffman, his second. This pace, there's going to be a lot of free throws being shot here in the second quarter. Both teams uh, pretty reaching and grabbing and holding here, and the officials are uh, letting them play a little bit. But, man, you got you got to call those. You know how we talked earlier about this could be a quick, <laughs> very quick game. This could be a very long game. Yeah, it's <clears throat> setting up to look that way right now. You know, and it's tough for the Big Green to get into an offensive rhythm, and it has, you can tell, obviously. Crone, good, good defense there on Josh. Good, good pressure there by Crone, uh, you know, going against a all-county player there in Josh, and he's not backing down, yep. even though he's given up about five inches on in size. Coach Lee wants a push off. They're going to get 40. Bryce Basinger, his second. That gives them two guys with two. Kyle, inbound at 19.2. Turbin set up the offense. He just might shoot it from there. He's been kind of hot from deep lately. They're playing some really good defense, not letting him get anywhere. Oh, they're going to get that. And our fans are getting pretty excited. Tell you what, you can tell it's a Putnam County League basketball <laughs> here on a Saturday night, partner. I really thought that Luganville, as one of the officials was talking to him, they just about got him for his fourth foul with a technical. Yeah, he just picked up the, the personal to give him three, and he was doing a lot of barking there after that one. You don't see many get three in the first quarter. And now, referee's talking to Coach Lee. I think Ron Black had heard enough. He basically gave him one more warning, told Coach Lee, you better get him under control. Yeah. Well, 3.8 seconds. Biggering still with possession. Look for a lob to Seaver. Oh. Great out of bounds play. Way to draw it up. Just jacked through a little too high. <clears throat> yeah. Great idea. Just a little off on the execution. Going to give the ball right back to Pandora. Three seconds. I mean, they got a chance to... Maybe get up a desperation shot here at the end of the quarter. Prone to inbound it. Steiner, three-quarter court. Short after one. Ottaville Big Green, eight. Pandora Goboa Rockets, two. Lock 16 has been serving Northwest Ohio with the finest food and service for 40 years. Are you making plans for your awards banquet, company picnic, wedding, or other upcoming event? Please take the time to consider Lock 16 Catering to help make it a memorable event that will delight your guests. Lock 16 also offers home-delivered meals that are made fresh daily and are delivered right to your front door. Please visit our Lock 16 Steakhouse located at 706 North Cable Road in Lima for the finest steaks, seafood, award-winning ribs, and many other mouth-watering selections. For more information, you may contact one of our friendly staff members with Lock 16 at 419-453-3327 or visit our website at www.lock16catering.com. Good luck to all the Ottaville basketball teams. All righty. Interesting first quarter. <clears throat> Referees had a little uh, half-court meeting. I'm sure to discuss the physicality so far. Yeah, definitely. I think they had a little meeting there and said they're going to clean it up and see what's going on in the uh, second quarter here. I don't think they're going to let this game get out of control for them. All righty, second quarter underway. Ottaville's opening up in that man-to-man -man again. 
Want to force a quick turnover. Nice job there by Kyle. Forcing a quick turnover right out of the quarter break. Let's see if Big Rink settle down here a little bit on offense and get what we want. Once again, that big advantage in the paint. Would love to see him get down in there, get a couple easy ones. Kyle. Nice crossover. Good take to the bucket. And one. Nice job by Kyle Mann. Nice. Little continuation there. Took the bump, made a nice soft shot. Senior can reward himself with the three-point play. This Kyle, his first two. Good job by Grant. The old tap back rebound, nice job. Gives us an extra possession. Turnover by the Big Green. Fortunately, we didn't take advantage. Ryan just trying to do maybe a little bit too much there. Big Green out in a little 2 3 zone. Mixing up a little bit. Maybe trying to save on some fouls here, really. Coach Lee's calling it back. The well, way it looked to me, but. Uh, Team's not doing it. Oh, he's standing about half out on the court right now. Get him with the carry, yes. Yep. Coach Lee is not happy at all right now with this squad. I tell you, he's got to be happy with their effort, Matt, but just you can tell they're just limited at, uh, you know, certain skill positions where they're just having a hard time handling the basketball. Um, but I, I give them credit. They're, they're playing and they're trying to compete out here even though they're a little bit undermanned. Well, he's – trying to motivate them as hard as he can. He understands, like you said, you know, that man for man, we're better about every position. Seaver with a nice turnaround. We're gonna get Grant with a foul. Good effort there, I mean, that's what Grant does. That's gonna be Grant's first, team sixth. He'll be staring on the barrel of a long first half, both teams in the bonus after this. I was gonna come down to free throw shooting. That was one of the keys to the game last week against Minster in the fourth quarter. Green did a nice job making her free throws, but I think over the course of the year, we're only about a 62, 63% shooting team. So, I don't know. Maybe that's part of Pandora's plan. Big Green on the season, 63.7%. Those are official stats from the truck. Kurt Walker just sent down to us. Yeah, we appreciate Kurt cruising around the county, getting those stats for us here today. He did a nice job heading down to Mercer County for the Minster game. And rumor has it he's over by Ottawa right now, trying to get some good signal for these Pandora folks. Good effort there. <laughs> you know, everyone's scrapping around pretty good right now. Going to be a jump ball. Possession is going to go to the Big Green. Good hustle there on all parties. Gavin Berry got in there and really mixed it up. Just me matters. This little pressure maybe seem and catching out of a little bit off guard maybe. <laughs> uh, the, the physical nature just seems like it's got us out of rhythm. I mean, you sit there and look, yes, you know, like we said, they beat Lipsick, but they've also had some really bad losses this year from what I saw. Nice cut there by Grant. Couldn't quite catch another turnover for the Big Green. Give us three for the quarter. But you just kind of wonder, you know, going back to it, did they kind of overlook them, you know, looking past them. Another big mm -hmm. matchup with Miller City. They got a week off after this. You know, trying to, they've been playing a lot lately, so. Yeah, and they've played some really good competition here these last few games when you, Take the likes of Minster, Lincoln View, Toledo Christian, you know, some really big uh, marquee names on the schedule. You know, and Pandora comes in with a losing record and, you know, like you said, a couple of bad losses. Uh, maybe overlooked them just a touch and, you know, Pandora's catching them a little bit off guard right now. Not to mention towards the end of the year, we pick up Shawnee. That's uh, not going to be an easy task at Shawnee, number one ranked team in the state. Saw one of their players, George Mangas, put up 40 last night, a quiet 40. Yeah, that's great to see. Great pickup. That'll be a really good game there in mid-February. Second last game. I just looked at it. So that's going to be real good right for tournament. Caden Edelbrock enters for the Big Green. His first action came in for Kyle Manns as Kyle picked up his second. So we got Trey, we got, Kyle, and Will with two, and Grant's got one. I was just going to say we got three guys now pinned with uh, two fouls each. Fortunate there on the missed front end of the one and one. We're going to get possession back. Set off the mark by Will Huffman. There's Josh's pull up, in and out. Good rebound there by Grant. And they're going to get a hold. I do believe on number 21, Blake Steiner. 
Grant's going to go to the line, shooting 101. <clears throat> I think Josh is trying to get himself going here a little bit. He's had some really good success scoring the basketball the last four or five games, and you know Pandora's done a nice job limiting him a little bit here. We need to get him going. Entering the game for Pandora, Aiden Morris. He's a freshman. Grant quarter cracks. Gets his first bucket of the game. 11 to 2 here. 5.30 left here in the second quarter. Quarter cracks. In and out. Great rebound by Seaver. Up and in. Great offensive rebound. Way to crash the glass there by Ryan. Yeah. Big time effort play there by Ryan. Did a great spin move to get away from his guy blocking him out. Rewarded with the two. Big green low, 1 2 2 full court. Looking to trap. Back to a man. You know, and Ryan, I mean, guarding the top of the key, he's long enough, he's athletic enough, he can handle it. Yeah, no question. Just needs to be smart, no reaching out there, guys. Let's just play good, solid defense. Let them make the mistake. And doors back to taking their time. I'm not sure right now that's by design, Matt. I think that's our defense has a lot to do with that at this point. I mean, good defense. Green being tenacious. They're doing a good job playing without fouling. You know, we're in the one-on-one. -on -one. No need to get any extra fouls than we need. Just stay solid. You know, so far we broadcast right after you've usually said that. We've committed a foul or something and sent him to the line. No, look at that. <laughs> look at that. I saw no push up here. Out of bounds. That's right. <clears throat> Coach Lee wants him to push a little more. Turbin setting up the offense for the Big Green. They like the high screen action. That's a good roll for Grant. When they switch, they're getting into him. Oh. That's uh, a lot of contact. Letting them play, there's no question on that. Uh, looked like Josh got hit on the arm, no call. Got to play through it. And off, this is a good measuring stick for them. And I tell you what, some other teams are going to be talking and figuring out what's going on as to why the Big Green are being held so well. And they're going to be looking at this film. Yeah. We're going to get Jack Langhouse the hold, his first. It's going to send Will Huffman to the line, <clears throat> looking to double their total for the game. We got a little substitute, a little substitution error here. They weren't letting the sub in, and looks like they're going to allow it, even though the shooter had the basketball already. Old home field advantage, trying to buzz the horn. Oh, he's yeah. getting ready to shoot. <laughs> First one up, and that's long. They're going to get Turbin. Oh, I thought Turbin kicked it out of bounds, but I guess not. Looks like Ottaville's trying to do something <clears throat> a little different off the free throw misses. I don't know if you noticed, they're, they're leaking two guys down, and Josh threw that long one to Trey before, and it looked like Josh almost was ready to throw that pass before he had kind of corralled the rebound, which enabled Pandora to knock it out of his hands a little bit. Jack Langhouse lets it fly. Short. Rebound by Harris. Three minutes and 15 seconds, 13 to 2. Low scoring affair tonight. I mean, I've seen some low scoring affairs in my day, Matt, but man, never, you know, two points this late into a, a second quarter. And, you know, I'm not Junior sure. Junior high games. Yeah, I mean, seriously, the way this is going, if Pandora doesn't make a few free throws, they might be stuck on that number for a while. Yeah. Great defense by Grant, just staying big. And nothing. They're going to get a coach lead, timeout, 30 seconds. Great defense by the Big Green. Another contracted group in Ottaville is very proud of our basketball teams and all of our activities representing our great school. We'd like to acknowledge the following for all their hard work and dedication to the high school basketball programs. Girls varsity coach Michelle Leach, junior varsity coach Vaughn Horseman, and assistant coaches Shelly Eichel and John Turbin, boys varsity coach Keith Utendorf, and assistant coaches Connor Lotzenheiser and Patrick Miller. Cheerleading coach Shonda Marks, the pet band directed by Asha Koenig, and assistant pet band directors Kim Burt and Sherry Edelbrock. 
Athletic Director Mark Odenweller, Superintendent Scott Mangus, High School Principal John Turbin, and all the supportive students and parents. Another contracting group, 17359 State Route 66 in Ottaville, is an enthusiastic supporter of Ottaville girls and boys Big Green basketball. Good luck to our mighty green. All righty. We're back live, 248. Pandora stuck on the two. Uh, Cole Furley, number 15 for Ottaville, getting his first action into the ball game here. Big Green going deep into the bench with foul trouble, and yet still holding on to an 11-point lead, albeit only scoring 13 points. You know, Adam, has Pandora attempted an outside shot outside the free throw line? Well, that's a good question. I don't think I'm that. getting I'm getting dizzy watching all these passes. I, I, I seem to have forgotten. Yeah. They do a lot of passing in practice because they don't for, you know they don't have a lot of turnovers in their passing game. However, they gotta get a few shots off to score some points. Right. You know, we used to have a thing in practice where you had to pass many times before you shoot. There's a shot. Freshman trying a little floater there, no good. Great nice. defense. Got timeout. Good effort there by Cade Nettlebach, 32nd for the Big Green. Miller Precision, located in the Industrial Park in Ottaville, is a proud supporter of all the Ottaville teams. They offer full service of precision machining services and has been in business for over 30 years. MPI would like to wish the Ottaville Big Green the best of luck in today's contest. Everyone at Millie's would like to wish the Ottaville Big Green and Ottaville Lady Green the best of luck during their season. Stop in during the week and try one of our nightly wing specials. We also have freshly made salads, wraps, or try one of our hand-tossed pizzas. Stop in after the game for food, fun, and drinks. Win or lose on the court. Everyone has a good time at Millie's. All right. 155 <clears throat> left here. Great effort there by Cade Nettlebrock. He's going to, however, come out of the game. Kellen Schlockbaum, sophomore. Been playing very good, like we said earlier. Yeah, I was wondering if old Kellen was going to get uh, cracked the lineup here in the first half. He had a nice, another nice JV game that we watched here before, so good to see the sophomore getting a little time. Uh, especially foul trouble. Big brother's on the bench with foul trouble, so little brother's going to take advantage, I think. Yep, maybe provide us a little bit of a spark here. I know he did the other night. Let's see if he can do it again. Turbin down low. Good, strong move. I like what they did moving down there. Yep. Great idea. Josh is just a little bit off tonight, and I'm going to give Pandora a lot of credit on that. They have seemed to got him rattled a little bit. I'm sure the senior will settle down, though, and settle in. Great defense by Cole. Good effort. You Not know, on you him. thinking about this, Matt, and I know it's an argument that's been made a lot over the years, but implementing the uh, shot clock in high school basketball. You know what I mean? It's one of those conversations that always comes up. Uh, and in a game like this, it kind of makes you think, man, it might not be a bad idea. I'm wondering if Pandora would get any shots off. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, be a turnover, I guess, instead of 30 passes. Well, but, they'd actually have to try to get one, but I, I think you're right. The harder they try, the, they might not even get one. Great defense by quarter cracks. Cut them off. Slot bomb with the tip. Urban. A lot of contact. I know the Pandora faithful aren't happy about it, but – Looked like the offensive player initiated it. Seaver, nice shot, fake. Callum, step back three. Off the mark. Referee Brad Ellerbach, Johnny on the spot, said it hit the baseline. Otherwise, that would have been a nice save from Grant. 13 to 2, still. 54 seconds left here. Bear Green looking to trap. Force situation a little bit. Oh, oh, yep. Good job there by Josh. How's the turnover situation looking there? You know, Pandora's got about seven of them right now uh, compared to Ottaville's three. But, you know, once again, I think uh, the problem is there are a lot of dead ball turnovers where they're not like steals for layups like we got a couple early, but that's been about it. Yeah. Turbin, free throw jumper. Got it. Whew. Degree of difficulty on that one, about a 9.6. Great shot there by Josh. Maybe that'll get him going a little bit here. Picked up his dribble. Nice catch. A little spin move, Furley. Not sure anybody's aware of the clock situation. Only about 10 seconds left. Shot off the mark there by Blake Steiner, senior. And the out. It's a little out of control there on that spinning running jumper. Will coming in, 10 seconds left. 
Looks like we got something set up here. We want to run a little, little X play here. This one looks familiar. A little curl action. There he goes. We got Josh. Ooh. Just a oh. little bit. Boy. Boy, that's a second out of bounds play that was right there. Remember the, the lob at the end of the first quarter for Seaver that we just missed? And right there, I mean, literally one stride away from a layup. Jack's going to come in for Will. Six seconds left, first quarter, or first half. Kellen, great defense. Half quarter up there, and that one too is off the mark. At halftime here, fellas, 15 to two. Can we check halftime? It is halftime, 15 right. to All two. Right. All righty, first half we have approached. And the Big Green have a 15 to two lead. Leading scorer, Josh Turbin with six, Seaver with four, Will with two, Grant with one, and Manns with two. For Pandora Gilboa, they have Dylan Crone with two, and that's it. We are going to pay some bills. If you're number one Big Green fans, Auto Homers and Niedeck and Hilvers Insurance Agency, is a winning combination. Kim and the staff at Niedeck and Hilvers Insurance Agency would like to wish the Big Green teams good luck this season. Your hometown agency since 1955 offers auto, home, life, business, and Medicare plans to suit all of your insurance needs. Niedeck and Hilvers Insurance Agency is conveniently located at 161 Northwest Canal Street in Ottaville. Call the office today at 419-453-3448. The Odenweller Milling Company carries a complete line of lawn care products, garden seed, and camp food. Stop in for grass seed and lawn weed killer. Considering calling the Odenwellers when you plan on marketing your grain, get a price for us for spring planting, including fertilizer, seed beans, and seed corn. The Otec Communication Company offers several TV viewing options. With a digital set top box, you can view and record many of your favorite channels in high definition. Otec Screen TV offers in-home streaming for all of your channels to your own devices, such as Fire Stick, tablet, and mobile phones. Watch TV Everywhere allows out-of-home streaming of over 70 of your favorite channels from anywhere that high-speed internet is available. For more information or to see a live demonstration, simply give us a call at 419-453-3324 or stop by our office at 245 West 3rd Street in Ottaville. That's Otec Communication Company, owned by those who serve. The Audible Bank Company is proud to be part of the Audible High School 2020-2021 basketball season. The Audible Bank Company has been locally owned and operated since 1904. Mobile banking and mobile deposits available. All of your accounts are now at your fingertips, along with your free credit score. That's the Audible Bank Company with over 100 years of service. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Audible Hardware Furniture Company is a third generation family owned hardware, furniture, appliance, floor covering, and mattress gallery. We carry everything you need for your home or business. Our friendly sales staff is here to serve you before and after the sale. Please browse our website at www.audivillehardware.com to see what we all have to offer. We've been doing business in Audiville since 1934. Now's the time for those indoor fix-up projects. Call 419-453-3335 or stop at the Audiville Lumber Company located at 194 Northwest Canal Street in Audiville. Let us help with your plans. Check out our Anderson window displays. Choose from French wood hinge units, casements, or tilt wash units. Finish off the project by installing a new ceiling, suspended or ceiling tile by Armstrong. Winterize your home with our steel entrance doors and Larson's solid core stone doors. A winning combination of beauty and energy savings. Interior, mold, interior molding and door units are also available in a variety of options. Call or stop by the Audible Lumber Company Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 5 and Saturday 7.30 to noon. And let us try to serve your needs. All right, we got 1.30 left here before the second half starts. 
Adam, as we discussed at halftime, it's a little bit different than what we thought was going to happen tonight. Uh, <laughs> what did we see the first half? Yeah, I, I got some late breaking news I want to report, Matt. I've been watching Ottaville warm up on this end that Pandora was going to, and I promise you there is no lid on the hoop. So we've made plenty of shots here, so hopefully that opens it up for the second half, partner. Well, let's hope so on this end. Um, it was a very tough half to watch. Whew. You know, we alluded to the free throws. Pandora couldn't get a free throw to fall in. They were getting to the line. They were getting fouled. They were doing the fouling. Um, it should be a very interesting half. You know, as horrible as what they have been playing, to be pretty honest, they're down 13 points. The Big Green have not exactly lit the court on fire either themselves. So it's just kind of one of those nights to where 13 points isn't that big of a deficit, and they might be coming back. Yeah, especially with the three-point line. I mean, you just never know. But I think Pandora kind of came out of the gates and, and really got us off our game a little bit early, you know, with their pressure and the delay mode. Kind of kind of maybe took us by surprise a hair. But I expect us to really turn it around here in the second half, uh, apply the pressure, play our game, and really, uh, you know, just kind of make some momentum going forward for us because Pandora can't make us play this way the entire entire game. There's no way. No. <laughs> You know, like you said, pressure. And Pandora, that's the one thing they did. They like to kind of muddy the game up, muck it up a little bit to make it a little tough for those guys to get comfortable, get into a rhythm. And that's what we really need to do here the second half. Pandora will start off with the ball. So we shall see here in just a few seconds as the Big Green look to take the court, get the second half underway. Yeah, foul situation, something to keep an eye on here a little bit early. Both teams have got multiple starters with two fouls. Um, I think, you know, we get Will back in the game, give us a little bit of a spark plug here, hopefully offensively, and he can be smart and, and not pick up any cheap ones here early in the quarter. They're going to go with their starters, minus Grant, and throw Trey in. So you got Trey and Will with two, Kyle with two, and then you got Turbin and Seaver with zero. Trey close to picking up his third right there. If he could just stay out on the court and not reach, they're going to get a travel. Travel, Blake Steiner, turnover for Pandora. Great start for the Big Green for some turnover right away. All right, let's see if we made any offensive adjustments here at halftime. I really think we should establish ourselves in the paint. You know, uh, Seaver, Turbin on the blocks, I think are unstoppable. We'll see if we go in there to them a little bit. Nice cut down there by Ryan. Slapped away. Kyle Manz with the putback up and in. Give him four. Good recognition there. Went right down low, set play to Seaver. A little fortunate the, the tip pass goes right to Manns, but Johnny on the spot for the easy two. Will lands on his left hand. That was his hand he injured here a few games ago. Slow to get up. Another turnover for Pandora. Two possessions, two turnovers. Coach Lee going to get him out entering the game. Aiden Morris, he's a freshman. Will, setting up the offense. Nice get past the tray. Good take, double pump, in and out. Nice. Trey kind of jumped out of the way there. Nice bounce pass to Seaver. Seaver the beneficiary, like I said before, right place, right time. Nice job, he's working hard on that block. Good to see him get rewarded. Good defense by Will. Just needs to make sure he doesn't pick up a cheap third. You know, these are the games here. When you're up big, you want to make sure you're out there and you get a chance to play. Because chances are our coach is going to pull the cord shortly into the fourth if things start to get out of control. Yeah, most definitely. Pandora, perfect three for three with turnovers here on their possessions in the start to second half, Matt. That's not a recipe for a comeback. No. As the lead continues to grow. Will with a nice lob, easy play. Seaver with four in the quarter. Eight for the game. Big Green definitely playing a lot more under control, a lot more of our game here to start the second half, which is great to see. Nice take to the bucket by Will Huffman. Schlagbaum with his third. I know Trey don't like that call, but that's a, that's a foul. He's shaking his head, but that's a definite foul. Uh, I know he's playing hard out there. He's working hard, but, uh, you know, he just seems to be – we talked about right place, right time. He seems to be wrong place, right time right now. Free throw, first one of the night. Good by Huffman. And Trey's still shaking his head, walking off the floor. <laughs> Guy can't catch a break tonight. That gives Pandora 
quarter and a half almost. Finally, they got off the snide there and made another one. Two free throws. 21 to 4, 6.13 left here in the third quarter. Double their total on one trip. I wonder, you know, we were talking about state records and school records and all that stuff as Will drives the lane going to shoot two free throws. I, I imagine there's some type of a state record for lowest score in a game, isn't there? I mean, as far as points scored? I'm guessing Holgate probably was either the recipient or they were the ones defending the team would well, be my guess. We'll see if we can get Kurt out in the uh, cable van out there where he's looking up some stats for us, see if he can get the Internet and pull that up, the state record for – Least amount of points scored by a team in a game. Heard he's on his way back from over the Pandora Way. Reception's uh, really cleared up over there. He was at Ted's Market a little while ago. Sent us a text. Will, 0 for 2 from the line. Great rebound by Seaver to keep it alive. Turbin, up and in. Big green flexing their muscle here right now on the boards. Give them another easy two off of a missed free throw. Coach Lee really working over Ellibrock down there. Cross-court pass to Harris. Out to the other freshman, Morris. Nice take. Ooh, looked like he got hit in the yeah, eye. The no eye. call. He looks like he's pretty hurt. Uh-oh, Coach, Coach Lee, Lee coming out to half court. And they're going to... He got poked in the eye pretty good. They're going to catch Kyle for the offensive foul, but uh, I think the better action was back here with Coach Lee storming midcourt. It's probably lucky the action wasn't going that way because he would have been easily teed up. Getting some medical attention. Referees checking, making sure everything's okay. Looks like the trainer's over there. Hopefully he's going to be okay. Looked like he took a finger right to the eye. Yeah, it never feels good. Jack Langhouse enters along with Kellen Schlockbaum. Nice pass to Will Miller. Unfortunately, it's for the wrong team. Will up and in. Everyone's getting the scoring column. Ten quick points here. Start the quarter for the big green. Just what the doctor ordered. Will with another steal. Oh, oh, they're going to get him with a double. Good call. Good call. Great hustle there by Will. Just kind of got that ball poked and unfortunately got hit with the double dribble. I think Seaver was trailing that too. He was really feeling the need to throw one down. We do have some late breaking stats that came through. Whoa. Fewest points scored in a victory was two. New Knoxville beat Buckland back in 1939, and that is a real stat for you people out there giggling, laughing at us right two now. Two to zero, right? Yes. So they held it, they shot him out for the whole game. <laughs> well, the big weren't even close. That one's off the mark. Man. Good rebound by Seaver. Well, looks to push it. There we go. I guess you ask and you shall receive on some of this info. Good take by Will. They're going to get a foul by number five, Eli Huffman. His third. So you can see, Matt, just in the pace of the game and kind of our style, Will being in there in this start of the third quarter makes a big difference for us. Really missed him most of the first half or put himself out of the game with those two fouls, and he's done that a couple of times. Hopefully he's kind of learning not to get himself in those early fouls because it really, really hurts the team. And I don't think that – Anybody watching the game, on whether it's TV or in person, has an issue with the fouls that he's committing. It's just when he's doing it. He's very aggressive. Everyone likes to watch that. But he's just got to be a little bit smarter and more selective as to when he fouls. You know, kind of back in the day, we used to always tell the kids, get one foul in the first quarter, don't get two. Yep, exactly right. Good steal by Will. We're going to get a push in the back. Hey, Will is sing single-handedly just uh, creating havoc out there. And that's the stuff he could have been doing here in the first half. You know, had he not got that cheap second foul. Yeah. To the line, complete three-point play. He rims around. 30-4, to 4, 4.25 left here 
Bigger can keep up the pressure. A little 2 2 1, three quarter court. Kellen Schlockbaum. You know, Kellen and Will out there, that's a couple of guys with some quick feet and quick hands. Yeah, you don't want to be handling the ball much against those two, I tell you. And then you go down low, you got to deal with pesky Grant Quartercracks, who's flying all over the place. Good pull up jumper there. Long, offensive rebound by Huffman. No good. Will, right place, right time. It's kind of got open gym going on. Just play on. Big Green looking to set it up. Kellen, Kellen posting up. Turbin, three. Online, just a little short. It looked good from here, just a little short. Rebound nice. by Harris. Nice box out by the freshman Harris. Huffman setting up the offense. Pandora's other freshman, number four, that played a lot in the JV game, Colin Harris, has now checked into the ball game. Turnover. Turbin. Oh. Nice play. Great play. Will Huffman, 5'10", junior. Good hands and uh, good smarts to know where he was at, throw it off of Josh and save a possession for the Rockets. Kate Nettlebrock. So we got some fans out there, Matt, kind of saying if two to zero was the lowest in the, the state ever, uh, we'll see if we can uh, tune back in to Kurt Walker out there in that van on the internet and see what the highest scoring game ever in the, in the state would be. Turnover, my guess is going to be about 250 to 275 total points. Whew. Nice we, take, Turbin denied. We'd be here a oh. week, a week for that one. Stat van was quick to that, Dayton Colonel White beat Sydney back in 1993. What was that? 130 to 122, which would be 252 points. Oh, my partner, you were spot on on that one. Man, I might have helped them. I could have seen that ahead of time a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I don't know. I might have. The, the people at home didn't know that, partner. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Bryce Basinger enters back in. Big Green. Staying up, oh, back in, into a man. Got a different group of guys out there. You got Furley, Edelbrock. They're going to get Furley with the foul. The Pandora fans with a exciting well, little Bronx cheer there from the Rocket faithful. And uh, one last stat for you guys tonight: uh, largest margin of victory is 147 back in 1938. Centerburg beat Bladensburg 149 to two. Well. We got a long way to go before we get to 149. I say they got four. <laughs> I say the most overtime game. Uh, Ottaville had eight. That's not the most. That's tied for second most. That's back in 1984. When you know most of us four guys up here, minus Bryce, were not even. We were just little kids right at that point. Nice give and go. They're going to get a charge. Yeah. Good call. Nice help side defense there by the Rockets. Right idea by Will, but kind of put the big man out of no man's land. He really didn't have much choice to, uh, when he's going after that one. Big Green still keeping the pressure up. Just kind of a token full court. Trying to slow him down. I think we kind of want to speed them up a little bit. They seem to make some errant passes. Great take. From Bryce Basinger, the yeah. senior. Yeah, we've kind of forgot about Basinger. Remember, he picked up his third foul there in the second quarter early, almost his fourth, with, or in the first, excuse me. Yes, and uh, almost picked up his fourth, you know, with that technical foul. Remember, the refs had to go over and calm him down a little bit. And he got the old seat belt from coach there all of the second quarter and just got in here. He's going to get on the scoreboard. Getting his first point of the game. Jack Langhouse back in. Cole Furley's going to take a seat. Second one. Oh, my. Well, <laughs> we've seen a lot I tonight. Mean, that's kind of par for the course right now, <laughs> I guess. So they're going to uh, the official ruling there for everybody at home that wouldn't know, that's going to be ruled a jump ball. So the possession arrow, I believe, 
still fa yeah, still favors Ottaville, but then that arrow's going to switch, so that's technically a jump ball. You know, that was a line drive shot. I'm trying to figure out how it got wedged or it got wedged when it hit the front of the rim. Yeah, I think we're going to have to get Mr. Tim Kimmon over there with the level and, and check that rim out or something because I don't know how that stayed there either, partner. <laughs> they don't shoot that much. He might be able to do it while they're down there on the offensive end. <laughs> Big Green, Caden usually takes that shot. Big Green taking their time. Seaver working hard down low. Boy, he really wants a touch. Basinger's really giving him the business down there, too. That's a good one-on-one -on -one battle. Nice backdoor cut there by Caden. Missed him. Seaver stepping up. Take the screen. Will's denying it. 130 left. Slock bomb. Great ball pressure. Will threads it. Nice take. Oh, a little strong. They're going to get Seaver to foul. You know, um, Bryce Basinger is the Pandora version of Trey Schlockbaum for us a little bit. He's been in the middle of a few dust-ups tonight, hadn't he? I think he's got, got Seaver talking to himself a little bit out there. Coach Lee sees it, kind of gets and, him out. And you know, Matt, how that kind of works the second guy usually gets caught. You know, yep. the first guy doing something, you know, usually doesn't get it. And then Ryan, a little bit of retaliation after the fact on the play, you know, this guy's just giving each other the business a little bit, and he happens to be the one getting caught. I mean, now for the big green, I think, you know, you always want to win the games as big as you can. But now the biggest key is, I think, get out of here healthy. Don't need any fouls. Nobody getting hurt. Take care of the ball. No question. Let's get some of our bench players out there to see what they can really do. Yeah, I think that's going to be a, a critical part of the fourth quarter. We got a player down on the other end, and, and play just continued, continued, continued. You know, and this this is one thing, too. I understand the Pandora fans are um, irritated about this, but Audeville had the ball. From my understanding, it was the possession until Pandora retains possession, and he's not in danger of being in the play. He is they're supposed to continue playing. Yeah, I'm not sure if that if it's till they retain possession or if maybe like our Once break was stopped down. or it slowed down. Yeah, I think high school. I know in the pros they would keep going, but I think high school was more the, the safety issue of okay. Once it slowed down, let's go, and it clearly did. Yeah, boy, it looked like uh, number 32 there, Ethan Luganbill, when he came down on his shoulder there. Our OTEC partner Mark Huntingford knows all too well about that type of injury. Hopefully, he's going to be okay. Who marker? Well, both both of them, Luke and Billy and Mark. Okay. So I think Mark's still trying to recover from that dunk attempt he had where he got rejected by the rim, I believe. Well, that's a story for another day, my friend. You know, since we're telling stories, we'll save a story for half to, for the end of the third quarter. 43 seconds left, 30 to 6. Jacked inbound it. Now, Urban. Now Luke and Bill's taking his... Shot on Josh there, really bodying him. No call. Nice block. Looking Bill out. Lefty. Elbow jumper. In and out. Good rebound by Seaver. 25 seconds left. We'll see if the green play for one or if they're going to attack quick here. They look to push right away. Clock bomb. Seven seconds. Turbin Josh sees it. Back. Three. Got it. At the end of three, Ottaville, Big Green, 33. Pandora, Goboa, Rockets, six. The Ottaville Mutual Telephone Company offers many enhanced services such as caller ID, call waiting, and voicemail, allowing you to manage calls and retrieve messages from anywhere, even from your computer or smart device. The Ottaville Mutual Telephone Company offers high-speed access to the Internet through fiber optics. Your computer can now access a world of information on the Internet. Stop in at the Ottaville Mutual Telephone Company for more information. Hours are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Precision Ag Drainage is a local all-service drainage and excavating company that is owned by Scott Dietering. They are equipped to handle all of your drainage needs, including field tile design, tile and waterway installation, ditch cleaning, and any general excavating or trucking projects. If you have a need, please call Scott at 419-615-7305. Precision Ag Draining is a proud sponsor of the Big Green and wishes them good luck. Dr. Tom Seifker and staff would like to wish the Ottaville Big Green, Lady Green, good luck this season. Let's pull out a victory. 
All right. Um, stories. Uh, I believe we got the Mark Honeyford story that we should probably share with everyone that does not know. We had an alumni game here. Was it probably about 16 years ago or so? And we had two separate divisions, and Mark Honeyford was getting loose, and he wasn't able to play in the game because I believe he sprained his ankle in the warm-ups. Well, we're getting good and loose, man. I mean, you gotta got to really limber up. He's going pretty hard at it, and uh, it happens. It can happen to the best of us. I've never seen a man sprain an ankle by the line, but that three-point line got him good. But he recovered, though. He's back healthy 15 years later. <laughs> All right, back to back. action here, buddy. <laughs> we got a whole quarter to go. It's a, it can only get better from here with a quarter more. Big Green got four starters out. Nice pass down low. No place to go. Good spin move. Series of fakes. And then goes to the right hand. No good. Will. Going against Huffman. Huffman's been a pretty solid defender, as has the entire Pandora squad. Holding the big green down to 33 points, well below their season average. And they're going to get a charge. Jump the front of the way. Seaver slow to get up. I don't think he's hurt. I think he's just a little bit frustrated with how it's kind of been going for him. Pandora's been sliding guys right underneath him most of the night, taking a couple charges on him now. Uh, great move there by Coach, getting him out. Uh, I don't like to see Seaver on the ground. He's had enough injuries these last three, four years that up 27, and they've scored six points in the entire game so far. I don't think they're a threat to come back. Right. Schlock bomb. Here's Trey making another play. Good hustle there. Good hustle there by everyone. Blake Steiner in the mix. Jump ball. Turnover. Possession will go to the big green. One minute has gone by here in the fourth quarter. You know, could this be, we talked last game, could this be a game Grant Quarter cracks attempts a three-pointer? You know? Oh, I'd say if he gets a <laughs> gets an opening, uh, judging by the last couple, he's been happy to, to put one up. Good strong take by Schlockbaum. They're going to get Will Huffman, his third team sixth. <clears throat> Trey. Going to the line, looking to get his first two points of the game. First one up and in. Good looking free throw there by Trey. Lock <laughs> bomb, second one in. Got them both, good job by Trey there. Big Green still, still going to put a little token press up here. A little one, two, one, one. Oh, a good tip by Will. He tipped it. They tipped it. Possession goes to the Big Green. You know, and that's, you know, we've talked about it. Will needs to understand his role, and that's his role. Yep. Just playing a really nice second half. One of the big reasons why we've, you know, really extended this lead. He's been all over the place out there. Turbin trying to establish down low. Got to get him the ball. Tough pass. Good take up and in. Blake Steiner. It's his first two of the game. Josh will bring it up against Dylan Crone. Crone, you know, is one of their key players. He, they held him to two. Turbin, three. You know, you can only hold them down for so long. Nice turnover there, Kyle Manns. Oh, he's going to try to dunk it. It's called a little too late. Yep, yep, didn't quite have the runway on that one. Nice take by the freshman. No double bounce, pass out in the corner. Eli Huffman. Freshman with a little floater. Aiden Harris, his first two. Nice bucket there by Harris. He's been working hard out there all game. He's a little undersized. Root for those types of guys. Turbin, turn around. Got it. The 
Deflection by Trey. Kicked by Will. Now we've got the five minute mark, Matt. We're up 32, 42-10. Looks like we're gonna start seeing maybe a few new faces here getting into the ball game. I agree with you right now. I think the, the biggest thing is getting over to next weekend. We've got some big games coming up. You had mentioned Miller City, another league game next week. We've got uh, St. Henry coming up after that and, and a good Crestview team that we picked up. So I want to make sure we're at full strength for all them. Yep. Yeah, St. Henry, that's at home. So we got a back-to-back -back next weekend. Three-pointer. Yeah. Blake Steiner. He's got five in the quarter. They're going to get a push by number five, Eli Huffman. His fourth. I think that's team seventh, Matt. Going to be a one-on-one -on -one here. Opportunity for Will. 440 left. Will. First one of the one-on-one. -on -one. Out. Will's been struggling tonight. I think he's missed, what, three or four of them? Yeah. Free throws haven't been kind to him here tonight. He's done a lot of... A lot of good things here in the second half, but free throw line's been a little bit shaky. Nice strong take. Steiner in the paint, looking to post up Will. That one's way off. Yeah. Rebound by Caden. Kellen's lock bomb. Oh, little late pass. Good turnover there by Basinger. Back to Turbin, turned over. Josh Think looking to take it. Things getting a little sloppy out there. I like to see us kind of settle down, run some good offense. Or get Grant quarter cracks up there and one. Nice strong rebound there by Grant and put back. Basinger's fourth. Rockets with the mask subbing. Will coming out, Jack coming in. Man's in, Turbin out. Basinger back in. I think minus Basinger and number three, Aiden Harris. Uh, other three guys look like they played some JV time here for the Rockets. Grant. Job by the Grantster. A little three-point play. Always a playmaker there on the offensive glass. Good to see Grant. Give him four tonight. Harris for three. All of a sudden, a freshman's got five and a quarter. Scoring barrage. Pandora scored 10 this quarter. Edelbrock setting things up. Nice cut. Schlockbaum. Kellen. He gets his first two of the night. Nice read there by the sophomore. Nice little curl cut. Jack recognized it. Got him the easy layup. No look pass. Grant. Good hustle. Jump ball. Possession should stay with Pandora. Yep. 47 16. 313 left here in the fourth quarter. Basinger. Over to Morris, the freshman. All right now, Coach Lee's got a couple of freshmen out there, a couple of sophomores. Yeah, it's a young, young program, really. Uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of time. You know, some of these kids, they got to grow, they got to mature into their bodies, but also, you know, when you're going up against a, a senior-dominated group like we are tonight, I mean, that's a, a tough task for anybody, let alone uh, a group of freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. First one, up and in, Aiden Morris. His first one of the game. Caden Trentman in his first action. He's a senior. Great quarter cracks. A nice round of applause. Second one. A little long. That'll rock the rebound. Over to Schlockbaum. Ill advised turnover there. Basinger. Wild shot. Jack Langhouse cleans that one up. Kellen probably going to slow things down this time after last time. No, nope. well, maybe not. Nice tap back. 
Nice job. Edelbrock. Caden Edelbrock getting his name into the scoring column there, Matt. Nice little offensive rebound and put back. Cooper Hahnemann looks to check in. Is it just me or is number three the, the freshman Harris all of a sudden, once our starters went out, has got really aggressive, uh, has looked okay against the second string? Well, I would rather play against some second stringers than Josh Tribbett <laughs> and Ryan Seaver myself. Good call. Kyle Mann's nice strong take. Harris partially blocked. Morris. Good defense there by Schlockbaum to cut him off. Good strong take by Morris. Going to get Trentman, his first, team's ninth. First one off the mark. Cooper Hahnemann going to come in the game. Jack Langhouse. Coop. Uh, we'd had a little conversation last game that Coop was a diehard Reds fan. I swear he was a Cubs fan. And he actually texted me last night and said he's not a Cubs fan, he's a Reds fan. Oof. So, but he did say the reason for that is because he doesn't like his friends that were Indians fans, so he wanted to get under <laughs> their skin. That's why I love Coop. Smart, smart kid, <laughs> smart kid. Tell you what, Coop was deadly last game from the corner three. Knocked down two of them. Schlockbaum looking to set it up. Nice backdoor cut. Coop, he just wanted to get a rebound. Good effort there by Trentman. Trentman working hard on the glass. Oh, yeah, got to call that one. Good take there by Caden Trentman being strong with it. Whew. That been a penalty in the NFL game. I think it's on TV right now, Matt. Gavin Berry, his first, team's ninth. Trentman looking to get in the scorer's column. First one up. Ooh, just short. Furley. Cole coming in. Caden Nettlebrock. Take a seat for the big green. Trentman. Long. Good job by Furley to keep it alive. Kellen, oh. great effort. Nice play. Cooper. Get in there, Coop. All right. Cooper Hahnemann. Nice hustle play there. Cooper, the beneficiary. Kellen making it happen there in the backcourt. Nicely done, guys. Schlock bomb to schlock bomb down there. Over to Coop. 23 in the game. He's the mystery man. We don't have his name down. He's got a three. And we'll get we'll get Kurt in the van on that one. One last project here with a minute to go. Do something. He's on his way back from Ted's Market. Hahnemann to the hoop again. A little reverse with a smile. Rebound by Gavin Berry. Well, Matt, I'm not sure what's more surprising here with 30 seconds to go, the fact that we've only got 51 or that uh, Pandora somehow got to 17. I'm thinking that Pandora got to 17. Two, two points at half, uh, big output here in the second half. I don't know. Trey's going to hold it here. Well, good hard-fought win here for the green. I know it wasn't pretty, but guess what? Uh, Wins win. Ugly wins, a whole heck of a lot better They're than pretty loss. They were going to double dribble. Yeah, he did. I knew they were going to get him. With <laughs> they it. called it. <laughs> and the referee called it on him. I knew he picked his dribble up way too early. <laughs> and I thought, just please don't put that back down, Trey. He's still shaking his head. <laughs> he, he's been shaking it most of the game. <laughs> Finally, this game is over <laughs> with, fellas. <laughs> Everyone, uh, we'll be back with final stats here. Ottaville 51, Pandora 17.
Otterville Subway wishes all the big green teams good luck this season. Stop in for all your favorite sandwiches and wraps. Check out our sub platters and cookie platters. Remember us for all your catering needs. Subway of Otterville is located at 190 West 3rd Street. Call for orders to be picked up at your convenience at 419-453-7827. Best of luck to all the big green teams. Why buy a Simplicity? It's been said time and time again, you get what you pay for. In the case of Simplicity lawn and garden tractors, you get even more. Exclusive features like free floating mower decks for a perfectly manicured cut, full width rollers for a beautifully striped lawn, quick hitch mower deck for easy deck removal, and automatic controlled traction for the best traction system in the industry. So do you want to settle for getting what you pay for or getting more? Visit JL Wanamaker Sales and Service to see the exclusive features of a Simplicity, the way to a beautiful lawn. Good luck to all of our area teams. Bill of Ray Wanamaker Construction says, let's go Big Green, build up another winning season. Ray Wanamaker Construction of Ottaville specializes in all types of construction, whether it be commercial or residential. We can build you a beautiful new home, or if, you're in, or if your home or business is in the need of remodeling, new vinyl or aluminum siding, roofing or masonry work, call Ray Wanamaker Construction at 419-453-2602. For quality construction, contact Ray Wanamaker Construction in Ottaville for your complete building needs. Bill wishes all the area teams a successful season. All righty, we are back here with our post-game stats. I want to thank the 90 viewers, uh, households that we had. Um, totals for Pandora, Will Huffman had two, Dylan Crown with five, Bryce Basinger with one, Ethan Luganbill with five, and Aiden Morris with one. For the Big Green, <clears throat> Kyle Manns with six, Josh Turbin with 16, Grant Quarter Cracks with four, Ryan Seaver with eight, Trey Schlockbaum with two, Caden Edelbrock with two, Kellen Schlockbaum with two, and Cooper Hanum with two. And our OTEC design, or OTEC communication hometown design player of the game, Will Miller with 11. He had himself a great third quarter, came out and really sparked the big green to a commanding victory. Closing thoughts there tonight, Adam? You know, um, appreciate all the viewers kind of hanging with us. I know it was. Uh not necessarily the type of game we're used to. We've seen some pretty good ones here over the last couple of weeks. But in my eyes, you know, for the Big Green, this was a good one. It's a good hard-fought win. You never know what you're going to get in league play. Uh, and like we talked about before, you know, kind of an ugly win is a heck of a lot better than a, a pretty loss. And you give Pandora credit. They came and, and tried to play the game the way they thought they could win it, slowing it down, kind of muddying it up with some physical ball. But uh, in the end, just too much for the Green. And looking forward to next week against Miller City. Yep, should be a good broadcast. Um, you know, you kind of said everything that needs to be said. There isn't a whole lot more to be said. Got out of here with a win, no injuries, so that was a blessing. Thank you to the following sponsors for your support for the Ottaville Girls and Boys Basketball Broadcast for the 2020-2021 season. a and Tire and Auto Parts and Express Mart, Alton Burger Insurance Agency, Canal Side Burgers and Brew, Creative Edge Cabinets and Woodworking, Family Chiropractic Center of Ottaville, Fort Jennings State Bank in Ottaville, Geisey Transmission, Hometown Design, j &M Excavating, Lock 16 Catering and Steakhouse, Miller Contacting Group, Miller Precision Industries, Millie's Cafe, Niedek and Hilvers Insurance Agency, Odenweller Milling Company, Otec Communication Company, Ottaville Bank Company, Ottaville Hardware Furniture and Appliance, Ottaville Lumber Company, Ottaville Mutual Telephone Company, Precision Ag Drainage, Dr. Thomas Siefker, Subway of Ottaville, JL Wanamaker Sales and Service, Ray Wanamaker Construction. Thank you so much for all your sponsors for the 2020-2021 basketball season. Once again, everyone, I'd like to thank you for tuning in alongside Kurt Walker, and Bryce Schrader, and Adam Kester. This is Matt Wanamaker saying good night. <laughs>